mid-November, aka Christmas for the deer hunter. I'm here in Nebraska with my friend Dan Flavin, and we're on our buddy Dustin's ranch getting ready to chase some mule deer and whitetails in the sandhills. This isn't our usual backcountry style hunt, but after two months of hard hunts, sometimes it's really nice to enjoy what I call a front country hunt from the comfort of a pickup truck. On Friday evening, we did a little scouting for our target bucks with hopes of finding some giants for Saturday's opener. Just got back and uh, first it was a little slow looking for some deer, but um, we got to the field and uh, saw one really good white, we actually saw two really good whitetail tonight. Um, few does the bucks are definitely chasing does and then as we're coming back towards the house uh, we saw a really cool really cool mule deer it's like a five by seven I don't know six by nine I don't know it's hard to what do you, what do you say seven by eight, seven by eight. Um, really really cool deer so uh, we're gonna be looking for him tomorrow for sure the best way to hunt this area is to cover as much ground as possible we try to keep moving and glassing the hills, and with very few trees around, it's amazing at how well these deer can blend into the sand hills. This buck wasn't quite what we were looking for, especially on private land. And right as we were walking back to the truck, however, we spotted a really nice whitetail. In Nebraska, you can choose to fill your tag on either whitetail or mule deer. Dan has shot a lot of mule deer out here, and when he sees a nice whitetail, he just cannot pass it up. We started to stalk this whitetail, and we drove to close some distance. Holy crap. Hey, you see got a few here. Unfortunately, the same reason that we love to hunt the rut can also be a hindrance sometimes. A smaller buck came in and began pushing the larger deer around. Before we had enough time to close the distance, he chased him onto the neighboring property and out of our sight. Here he goes. With bucks beginning to wander and chase does, we knew our chances of seeing that same buck could be slim, but Dan was committed to this whitetail, so we marked the spot. With two target deer set, we continued moving to see what else we could turn up until it's down there's so many deer cruising around have you ever seen that deer before dustin no yeah the deer we usually kill out here we've never seen before my big drop tine deer last year that i dropped with the six five whether we 300 it just we'd never seen that deer before just nope. moving at lunchtime the rut's going on right now and they're cruising but that that is had he played I would have thwapped him. He's one of the best eight points. Everybody always talks about a great eight point. That's a great eight point, right? Yeah, he's heavy, he's outside the ears, he's tall, he's a beast, old guy. The action continued and we came across a very nice looking mule deer. We just spotted a buck. It's barely 100 yards away over this hill. We're gonna see if we can get up close. We we came around a corner and he was close enough that we didn't want to stop and look for as long as we didn't spook him. So we're gonna see what he looks like.
Being the first shooter comes with the weight of making a shooter pass decision. This was an awesome mule deer for sure, and on public land, I would have pulled the trigger with no hesitation. The more I looked at him, though, the more I kept thinking about that deer I had seen on Friday night. I didn't know if we would ever see him again, but I decided to pass and let Dan have him if he wanted. He's just, I just want to see that he forks up. He does. With his heart set on the whitetail, Dan ultimately passed as well, and we let that muley walk. There's always a risk in letting a nice animal walk, but on private land, hopefully this guy will grow, and in a year or two, he could be a world-class buck. Great deer, but we know what else is around, so we're going to pass on this guy. We formulated a plan to go check the area where we saw the big whitetail for Dan, and then we were going to head and look for my target buck. As luck would have it, he was on the right side of the fence this time, and he was by himself. A big boy showed up. Big man Mac was looking out the left side like a smart camera guy. Saw our boy, he's coming this way, so we're gonna go get on him. He's about a couple miles away though. Exciting. If we can get up in that area right there, uh huh. we can see if he goes over that, which I don't know if he can or not without us seeing him. Okay. He's right behind this big hill right now. Okay. So if anything, maybe stay in here, we're going to have more cover yeah. so we can drop, it. We we can drop into this cover and then sneak up.
get him and get out of here. Yeah. Let's get him. We got dragging him tomorrow. That was what we do in Nebraska. Now we're going to do the Nebraska shuffle where we kill the hot deer that we've wanted all week and we turned down big freaking deer and we waited for the white thing we wanted and now we're just gonna throw him in the truck and get out of here and go kill Luke's deer. Love it. Our plan to intercept that deer worked perfect. Oh my gosh, we just got eyes on him. Uh, he's pretty big. <laughs> and that deer came right to where we were and then for some reason at the end he started running right at us. Uh, my plan came together on this one, so we're gonna try to get him down quick. We'll see what happens. Dude, that's oh my God. God. All right, we'll come back here. Uh, Might just we'll drag him down. Okay. Yeah, Luke's okay. Run I'll run him. and get, I'll like run to get the truck. We'll drag him down. Okay. okay. And get out of here. Dude, Dude. You saw him. Okay. That's so cool. We saw him. We saw him first day and just kind of had to have him. He was kind of the cool stud buck of the area. Just how he showed up and presented himself. What a cool deer. Unbelievably, it worked like a charm, but we were running out of light really quickly. So we dragged him back to the truck, took a couple picks, and headed to where we had last seen my target deer. He's coming down. That's, That's him. him. That's him. Yeah. That's him. Yep. He's pushing the dough. We found the big guy. And uh, we're hiking up to see if we can get a shot. He went behind a little ridge and we can't see him at the moment. But they are moving tonight. So, he's going to come in. We spotted him with barely any shooting light left, so the hustle to get into shooting position was on. I'm on him. I can't tell. He's big, I can tell that. I'm on him, Luke, if you... I'm on him. You hit him. Yep. It's back slightly legs. Slightly back. He's coming right at us. Get ready for right in front of us. He's, he's at first glimpse, we thought my shot placement was a little far back. The buck's back legs dropped, giving the appearance of a spinal shot. But later, while gutting the buck, we found a perfect heart shot. Since he was quartering away heavily, the entry wound appears further back than it was, but in actuality, it was right where it needed to be. The shock from the 6.5 RPM caused some serious central nervous system damage, resulting in his back legs going out. By the time we walked up on him less than a minute later, he was expired. Oh man, I thought it was over. We came over this ridge and uh, there was no, we couldn't see anything. So we just decided to peek like way over the hillside in case they slid under us. And right as we get to where we could see down the hill, we see him running up this other hill, chasing a doe. And it happened quick, but I don't even actually know how far the shot was, but the 6.5 RPM with the new uh, Mark 500 did the job. So I can't wait to go see him. Yeah, what a blessing. Thick. Look at that. Something was working in our favor tonight because uh, we saw Dan's deer at basically a, a thousand yards away, a mile away. Um, we backed the truck up and just made a beeline straight for Dan's deer and it ended up running right at us. And I think he shot it at less than a hundred yards. We spotted this guy skylined at 500 yards, ditched the truck, jumped out. And uh, we made a beeline for the direction we thought he was headed. 
and he popped out at 123 yards and didn't go 20. <laughs> Man, worked out good. <laughs>